Good morning. Uh, this is the um, the press conference that uh, we have uh, the day before our legislative meeting, and we have a legislative meeting tomorrow. Tomorrow, June third, is our regular monthly legislative meeting of the council. Uh, it seems like it's coming real close since we just had a legislative meeting this past Wednesday, which was what we call an additional legislative meeting to take up the budget. And uh, we are uh, scheduled to have second reading on the Budget Support Act on June 11th, although probably given the schedule, that will uh, slip to uh, June 17th. The uh, agenda for tomorrow uh, has a number of items on it. I uh, don't know that any of them are controversial. Uh, one of them that is coming through the committee of the whole tomorrow is other post-employment benefits fund amendment act of 2014, which would establish in the code some parameters regarding the post other post-employment benefits, uh, similar to what we have for the retirement board. Uh, the other post-employment benefits, which is a, a fund that has not gotten a lot of attention until recently, is a fund that uh, basically was required of all uh, local governments uh, under uh, the, uh, I believe it's the Government Accounting Standards Board, uh, GASB, the, uh, maybe 2006-2007. It's, um, it's a fund that holds uh, contributions from the government for employees of the district government who retire and uh, uh, receive a discount, this is a benefit, on their health insurance if they wish. And it's a fairly new fund. The district is actually uh, leading the country. I think there are only other, a couple other jurisdictions that have as much uh, in terms of unfunded liability or funded liability, as much of the funded liability paid as the district does. But our code is pretty silent on this, and so legislation is coming out of the committee the whole tomorrow that would set some parameters to ensure integrity of the fund going forward. There are a number of nominations before the council tomorrow, uh, including uh, the council's appointment to the Commission on Selection and Tenure of Administrative Law Judges of the Office of Administrative Hearings. I mention that just because the Office of Administrative Hearings has been in the news over the last um, perhaps half a year. Uh, there's a three-member board or commission that uh, reviews the selection of administrative law judges as well as the reappointment of them. And uh, all of the members of that commission, all the voting members had resigned last fall. And uh, before us tomorrow is the appointment of Joseph Onik to, uh, as the council's appointee to that commission. The council will also be considering appointment of a new chief medical examiner, Roger Mitchell, who comes to us from New Jersey and is very well regarded. And that's an important appointment in terms of continuing the progress of improving the office of the medical examiner. The um, uh, agenda for tomorrow has two bills on uh, first reading that will get some attention. The first is wage theft prevention. And that uh, bill had come out of the uh, Committee on um, Business, Consumer, and Regulatory Affairs several weeks ago. There was an effort to try to get it on the agenda in May, and I asked that it be uh, held off so that some technical work could be done on the bill, and that has been done. In talking with representatives of the mayor last week, if there are changes, to, if there are amendments tomorrow, I expect that they will be relatively minor with regard to wage theft prevention. I think this is a very important piece of legislation because our law has been silent with regard to uh, wage theft. The wage theft is where, for example, an employee is uh, hired uh, usually on a temporary basis, but not always, and is promised to a certain wage. And then when he or she gets their paycheck, they find out that they've gotten something less than what they expected. It's very hard to prosecute those cases. So this legislation is necessary to try to uh, protect workers and ensure fairness in the workplace. We also have before us the Fair Criminal Records Screening Act of 2014, which came out of the Committee on Judiciary and Public Safety. And that legislation is meant to uh, further expand uh, protections that the uh, Council has been adopting over the last several years to try to make it easier for somebody who has been arrested, for example, to be able to seek employment that uh, um, limits uh, the ability of an employer to ask 
for that kind of information with regard to arrests um, if, if they are old and uh, were never, um, never prosecuted or there was never a conviction. Well, with regard to emergencies, um, there are not too many. Uh, probably the one that will get the most attention is one concerning parking, residential permit parking. Uh, Councilmember Wells has proposed an emergency that would allow residents in some but not all of ANC 6E to be able to uh, continue with Zone 2 parking stickers. I expect that I'll get some attention. Mr. McDuffie has an emergency with regard to the Board of Ethics and Government Accountability, uh, the intent of which is to uh, reduce the burden on candidates and ANC commissioners with regard to reporting. And if you think about it, uh, a candidate who's not been successful uh, probably shouldn't have the same reporting requirements as those of us who hold public office. And uh, ANC commissioners, because ANCs uh, by their name are advisory, uh, should not have the same reporting requirements as uh, somebody who holds an uh, pos elected position on the council. And that's the intent of Mr. McDuffie's emergency. Uh, Councilmember Che has two emergencies. One, heat wave safety uh, emergency amendment act. Uh, which is uh, legislation that uh, she proposes about this time every year to um, limit evictions on uh, extremely hot days. And she also has an emergency concerning clarifying the authority of the Attorney General to prosecute uh, cases. The, um, the, the bill is called the Retail Service Station Emergency Amendment Act. And uh, was being introduced in light of a recent court decision limiting the Attorney General's authority. Uh, there are a number of contracts that are before the Council tomorrow. I don't think any of them are controversial. Um, and uh, with that, uh, let me uh, take questions if there are any. Yes. I also, I also saw another emergency from uh, Council Member Orange on vending regulations. What's, what's that about? Do you see that at the bottom, Vending Regulations Temporary Amendment Act of 2014? Uh, that's a temporary bill that uh, the emergency was adopted at our last legislative meeting. The, um, you may recall that last fall the uh, Council approved proposed regulations, vending regulations that the mayor had submitted. There were actually, the approval came in a number of stages. Um, what we found out afterwards was that what had been submitted to us for approval and our ability to amend uh, a resolution is extremely limited. So this was not something we could have caught at the time, but uh, we found out after the fact that there was um, criminal penalties were lacking, even though they've been in the, the law for, for decades. So the emergency last month was to restore the criminal penalties, and this temporary is um, a more permanent version of what we did on an emergency basis, although the temporary uh, lasts about two-thirds of a year. Since I have the mic, can I go ahead and ask you another question? Mine has to do with um, the budget, and, and a lot of folks are talking. I'm sure you've gotten emails and phone calls from people concerned about this so-called gym yoga tax. Yes. Is there uh, is there room for for maybe amending this for for changing the council's mind? Is there any discussion behind the scene before a final vote is uh, set to uh, take place? Do you do you believe that something can be done about this? Uh, probably not, because although the uh, the expansion of the sales tax was not done for the purpose of raising revenue, the fact is, is it's part of a package, and all of that fits within the budget balanced. So to undo a particular tax would have a fiscal impact, even though that was not the original, uh, that was not the motivation for the tax. Uh, let me be clear. Uh, the, what the council did last week was to adopt uh, most of the recommendations of the Tax Revision Commission. There were a couple in particular fee raising or revenue raising that we did not adopt. Um, and we did this as a package. And uh, part of that package was to improve the sales tax base. And uh, what a lot of tax experts will say is that when you, when a government is considering 
tax reform that might have some increases in it, it's important to do that at the same time that there are reductions. And that's what we did. So residents of the District of Columbia will see savings over the next few years in their tax bills, their overall tax burden of hundreds of dollars. Uh, the increase in the sales tax, if one has a gym membership, uh, is insignificant compared to the reduction in their tax burden. Of course, if a person is not a resident and has a gym membership, then uh, they won't see a reduction in their burden. Um, and that that's always uh, an issue with the district and its tax policy that we are not unable to tax income of non-residents. Uh, and so we do look to ways uh, that, uh, such as uh, the sales tax, the restaurant tax, that captures a lot of uh, non-residents. So that's a long answer, but the, the short answer is um, it, would be, it would be difficult to make adjustments because everything is balanced. The motivation of that gym tax was not about getting more revenue, but rather about fixing our uh, sales tax base, and this was at the recommendation of the Tax Revision Commission. Do you know how much this gym yoga tax actually will bring in? Uh, is there a number on uh, the tanning aside, the car washes aside, those other things? When it comes to fitness, do you know how much money the, the city could, reven could generate? Uh, the, the analysis that we have is $5 million, but it's um, based on the category, which includes the, uh, the health clubs and the tanning studios, uh, the yoga studios, and so forth. So I don't have a breakdown within that category. Other questions? Yes. Can you explain, and forgive me if you have already, um, why you're opposed to the idea of renaming a street after a Chinese dissident? Um, I haven't stated that I'm opposed. I'm not quite sure where you, you got that. Uh, last uh, Friday, I was contacted by the media about a letter that presumably was sent to the council. Uh, and I don't believe I've received that letter officially yet. Um, the letter came from a half dozen members of, I believe it was the House, Not there were no senators on the letter, as I recall. And uh, it urged that uh, the uh, district rename a street that goes in front of the Chinese Chancery, I believe, um, after a uh, human rights dissident who I understand is imprisoned in China. I think the issue of human rights is a very important issue and certainly a national issue. Uh, there's some impracticality in the request in that I believe the request was that we rename the street uh, by the anniversary of Tiananmen Square, which is Wednesday. And uh, I mean, there isn't even legislation introduced, let alone the normal process. Uh, I, I think there might be better ways that we can highlight this issue. Uh, that's not to close the door on this request from members of Congress. Uh, I think we should take their request seriously. Yes, Mr. Davis. Following up on that idea, I mean, the council has renamed several streets, but usually it's been in honor of someone. Would this be politicizing the street naming process in a way that the council is prepared to do? Uh, well, it would be politicizing the street naming process, but it's not the first time that the council has done this over the decades. Um, <clears throat> the last time that uh, comes to mind, or the last two times, uh, Raul Wallenberg Way and um, Anton uh, Sakharov Place or Way on 16th Street. I would note, though, that both of those are more heavily trafficked than international place, which uh, most residents probably haven't a clue where it is. Which again gets back to the point: there might be a better way to, uh, there might be there might be a way that's more effective in raising um, or, or highlighting this issue. Any um, uh, emergencies that the mayor has sent down that you'd want to draw attention to? Or anything you're concerned about? I don't uh, think so. Uh, your question was any emergencies the mayor sent down. Uh, there are a number of contracts, and as you know, council members um, sometimes uh, debate 
the timeliness of these contracts. I'm, I'm not aware that that is an issue with this agenda. Um, the uh, procurement process has gotten better in terms of getting contracts to the council more timely. Sometimes we have a contract that is technically retroactive because for instance, I think there's uh, one involving the health benefits exchange that uh, we received. It was transmitted before the contract term, but the contract term went into place a couple of weeks ago. So by virtue of our delay, it would now be partially retroactive. Uh, but I don't think there's anything that's, that's uh, especially controversial or difficult. You've got this meeting and then another one on the 17th? Well, the Committee of the Whole meets on the 17th. The Committee of the Whole meets uh, two weeks after the legislative meeting. The availability at this point in time to uh, move on the uh, soccer stadium before the end of the, uh, before the recess. Uh, if the question is about the soccer stadium, um, that bill was uh, transmitted to the council, what, four days, three days before we uh, acted on the budget. So we were very preoccupied. And uh, that bill will be on the log for referrals tomorrow. I think it would be um, very difficult for the council to move that legislation before July 15th. And uh, if you think about it, that's six weeks from now, and it's very unusual, if not rare, that uh, legislation would move in six weeks on a permanent basis. This legislation is especially complicated because it involves um, tax abatements, uh, land acquisition, land disposition, a lease arrangement, and implicates not just property in Southwest where the soccer stadium would be built, but also the Reeve Center. Not part of this legislation, but uh, uh, implicated as well in, in the proposal is uh, the government having to build a new office building for the agencies that are currently housed in the Reeve Center. So there's a lot going on here. As you know, the council last week in adopting the budget uh, put aside roughly $200,000 to um, obtain uh, independent uh, economic advice on the, on the deal, and that would probably take um, a month or two months. What I'm told is probably two months. As you know, this legislation was first promised a year ago, that is last September, and, um, and it only just now came, came to us. So. The, um, it would be difficult for us to move, move on that legislation in six weeks. Other questions? If there's nothing else, thank you all very much. See you tomorrow morning at uh, 10 a.m.